Today, we're gonna do the ultimate CPU bottleneck. We're pairing this, which is an AMD RX 5700 XT, a pretty badass GPU, with this guy, which is a single core Pentium 4 CPU. <laughs> I can't imagine that this is gonna go particularly well. First things first, this CPU, along with the motherboard, was actually sent by a viewer called Noah. So thank you very much, Noah, for sending in this combo so that I can do this ridiculous video. <laughs> I, I hope you enjoy it. There's a bit of a trend of YouTubers pairing fast GPUs with very slow CPUs. However, I think this may actually be taking it a bit too far because it's a single core CPU. I can't imagine that it meets the minimum requirements for any game made in the last 10 years. So what I'm gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna try and run progressively more demanding games on this CPU to see what the most demanding game is we can run with this pairing. And then I'm gonna overclock the CPU to see what the best performance is that we can get. The exact CPU that we're using for today's video is a Pentium 4 640. It's a single core CPU with a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz. And it also has hyper threading. So that, that really gives it an edge over other single core CPUs. Yeah, let's see, maybe this works. Let's go to the process of actually trying to get this CPU motherboard combination working. And here we have the base setup that we're gonna use for this extreme bottlenecking challenge. Uh, now, an interesting thing with this motherboard is that it's got both uh, DDR and DDR2 memory compatibility. Uh, so that does limit the max amount of RAM that you can actually use in the system to four gigs. Uh, so that's what I have here. I've got four gigs of very, very plain looking RAM. Now, there are a couple of things, uh, problems that we have to deal with on the motherboard. The first one is that we have a couple bent CPU pins on the socket, so I'm gonna have to straighten those out. And then um, there's also like a, like the CMOS battery is gone, uh, but I've got another one that I can use for that. From what I can tell, uh, we have two bent pins, which shouldn't be too much of a problem to deal with. Now with a little bit of prodding around, I actually think the pins are kind of straight enough so that they'd make decent contact with the CPU. Um, I didn't do it on camera because it feels quite a bit like poking around in someone's brain. Now that was a lot more of a nuisance than I actually thought it was gonna be. I tried various coolers and for some reason none of them have LGA775 compatibility. Except for this beast. This is the only cooler I have that's actually compatible with the socket. Um, that's not ideal. I have a new motherboard. Weirdly, it looks very similar to the previous one, although it is a completely different model. Uh, so let's see whether or not it works. If it doesn't switch on now, it's almost definitely the CPU that's the issue. Okay, it seems like it works, which is very exciting. So what I need to do is I need to install Windows 7 on this bad boy. I don't know why, but this actually kind of feels a little bit dangerous. I know that it technically shouldn't be, but it just, I don't know, maybe it's gonna like commit suicide because it doesn't have enough CPU power. It's, it's, it's quite a mismatched looking setup as well. With that, let's try and turn it on and see. I don't really know what I was expecting because it's like a working PC and it's not like there's some kind of deep uh, hardware incompatibility. It's not like I'm trying to plug like a PCI Express GPU into like an AGP slot. So yeah, I mean, it seems like it's doing fine. I'm gonna install the drivers and then um, we're gonna see what kind of gaming performance we get from this system. I think that's definitely 
the lowest Cinebench score I've ever gotten on this channel. With the entire installation process out of the way and the hilarious Cinebench score, it's time to see if we can actually play games with it. Now I'm gonna start fairly conservatively with CSGO. Um, if it can't handle CSGO, it's it's not gonna handle any 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 newer titles. It, it's not it's not a great start. Uh, we're getting about about 10 15 frames per second at this point. But let's see here. Um, it, it's actually defaulted to low on everything. Multi-core rendering enabled. Lol. Yeah, the CPU is really struggling. But I actually think it's crashed. No, 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 no. <laughs> this PC is so slow that it gives me that response quite regularly. That like, oh, wait, it's crashed. No, no, never mind, it's still going. Okay, here we go. Well, I mean... This is... We're averaging like 20 frames per second. About there. Okay, no, we're not averaging about 20 frames per second. We occasionally get to... And... Look, I killed him! That was me! That was definitely all my- Hey, don't take his gun. I want his gun. So it's taken so long to update the settings that um, the server actually thought that the PC died. So let me let me just do it through the main menu. Okay, it's all updated. Okay, at least at least we got that going for us. So hopefully now we can at least get some console level gaming performance. At this point, I really want to install something like MSI Afterburner so I can get like an overlay on the on the monitor that shows us like GPU utilization and things like that. But honestly, those things take system resources. And at this point, I think even having fraps running <laughs> is a bit much. If the GPU utilization is above five or six percent, I'd be surprised. I don't think it's running any better. I <laughs> like I, I guess it's a little bit better than it was before, but yeah, maybe it's a bit better. There, there's some pretty bad stuttering, like the, the, there are the, there's the occasional fairly big jerk, but this is entirely playable. Oh, oh, almost got me there. Wow, they're actually really, oh, face hugger. Not, not face hunter. What are they called? Head crabs here. <laughs> I mean, like, they're the same thing. At, at risk of massively infuriating some fanboys, face huggers and head crabs are essentially the same thing. After getting pretty decent Half Life gaming performance, I decided to try out Crisis. Now, the reason that I thought Crisis would work was because it came from the days when quad cores were just being introduced and dual core CPUs were still the norm. However, I just couldn't get the game running. I don't know if it was down to hardware incompatibility or just Crisis being a pain in the butt, uh, because I honestly always have problems getting Crisis running, uh, but nothing I did could get the game to work. After that, I decided very stupidly to go for PUBG, and that didn't work either. Finally, I tried to play Rise of the Tomb Raider, which also refused to run. I think all of these games refused to run based on just the CPU not meeting the minimum requirements. After that, I decided to overclock the CPU to see what the best performance was we could get for CSGO, which is the newest game I could get running on the system. My first attempt was overclocking from 3.2 GHz to 3.6 GHz, and this is what happened. Okay, so this is significantly better. Um, it's not quite playable yet, we're getting you know, a mid 30s, but this is significantly more playable than it was before. And that gives me hope that if we push the CPU even further, we can get even better performance. Now, after this very successful attempt, I tried to overclock the CPU to four gigahertz. That didn't work. The highest clock I could get stable was actually 3.9 gigahertz. The stuttering is not as bad and it's... Okay, never mind. There's still a lot of stuttering. Um, it's still not playable, really. Um, like, you're gonna die a lot based on, on, on PC performance here. That was actually 
fairly disappointing. I was really hoping that I could run newer games on this system, but honestly, what was I expecting? Like the CPU was launched in 2009. The simple fact that a seven nanometer GPU from 2019 is even compatible with this system is pretty impressive, I'd say. And it was really interesting to see how big a performance jump the overclocking made. Um, although that makes complete sense considering that the CPU was like the entire bottleneck in this situation. That brings me to the end of another fairly pointless video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I stream on Twitch on Saturday, so follow me there. And I've got an Instagram, a Twitter, and a Discord server. All that stuff is linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.